Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the Opinion pages of The Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. It's Super Tuesday, and voters in more than a dozen states are going to the polls. That includes the presidential primary and also primaries in gubernatorial, Senate, and more than a 100 congressional districts. And so please tune in tomorrow for a broader view of those results. But to pick out a couple things to focus on that people might want to keep an eye on tonight as these results are coming in. Bill, the first would be, is this the last stand for Nikki Haley? It does seem clear that she's probably going to lose most of these Republican primaries, if not all of them, and that she is not going to be able to have the delegates to have a real contest going into the Republican convention, though it could be interesting to keep an eye on the margins. Virginia is one of the states voting today. There is a Roanoke College poll that says of likely Republican primary voters, the Trump lead there is 51 percent to 43% for Nikki Haley. And if that holds, that could be one of her best states here throughout this whole 2024 cycle. Yeah, I think in a way, nothing has changed from the beginning. I mean, Nikki Haley was trailing by a lot in most polls and the states went for Trump overwhelmingly. So I think that story is already known. The question is, will her donors continue to back her to let her carry on? Because there's no reason Anyone has to step down, even if they're losing. I think the interesting thing is how different this is from previous primaries. I mean, it's not unusual for a big fight to occur at the top. But usually after the primaries, sometimes the man who wins or woman who wins picks like his biggest rival as number two. I mean, Ronald Reagan picked George H.W. Bush. John Kennedy had to go with Lyndon Johnson at the other half of his ticket, not particularly affectionate toward him. And the reason is that helps unite the party. So the logical thing in keeping with tradition is for Nikki Haley to join the ticket. That doesn't seem likely to happen just because the personal animosity seems so great particularly on Donald Trump's side. But it kind of speaks to what is the future for Nikki Haley. Maybe she's hoping that Trump is forced out by one of his legal cases and she would make the case, I stayed in the fight till the end. I'm your woman, choose me. She would have a good case, but she wouldn't be guaranteed it. I don't see her going the way of Liz Cheney. She's ruled out a third party run for no labels. So it'll be interesting what she sees. Maybe she wants, in exchange for an endorsement, the right to give a floor speech and lay out her positions and so forth. So I think that's the interesting side that we're all watching now. Another thing I'll have my eye on tonight are these Texas state legislative races. And Kim, the story there is that Governor Greg Abbott has been trying to pass educational savings accounts giving every family that wants to opt for them about $11,000 per student to take to other schools. And despite Republican control down there in the legislature, he's been unable to get that over the finish line. So he has endorsed 10 challengers to Republican incumbents who voted against this plan. And I think that is always a fascinating thing to see happen. And I think it's worth watching whether Greg Abbott can get them across the finish line, because that could bring more school choice to one of the biggest states and one of the biggest Republican states that doesn't yet have universal choice. Yeah, it's a big moment. And you can't say that Greg Abbott hasn't tried everything up until now to try to get this across the line without having to go and endorse opposition challengers to these incumbents. He called two special legislative sessions to get them in. They tried modifying the bill. These people would not move. In the end, 21 House GOP members joined Democrats in blocking that ESA bill. 16 of them are now running for re-election. As you say, he's endorsed at least 10 of them. He's pouring a lot of money into this, by some accounts, some $6 million. He's also got a number of activist groups like the Club for Growth that are backing some of these challengers. And I think the interesting thing is that a lot of these challengers are very charismatic. They got into the race specifically because of this, and they are leading with this issue, saying, look, I am here to get rid of this person that is standing in the way of something that the majority of Texans really want to see. 
a lot of the opposition, interestingly, has been from rural areas of Texas, and we're seeing this in other states, too. You'd be surprised you think some of these folks might be the, among the most conservative. But interestingly, a lot of these folks represent districts where their public schools don't work so badly. And so they are, in fact, saying, well, we don't want to give any money up for school choice. We want to protect our own principles. That is not necessarily, though, the view of a lot of their constituents in these areas. And we do have an example, a historic example of this. Back in 2022, Kim Reynolds, the Iowa governor, faced the same problem with a number of members, rural members of her own party who would not get on board with her school choice plans. She endorsed opponents. Those opponents won in the primaries, and she got her legislation over the finish line. So it'll be interesting to see if Abbott can do the same thing, because it might also prove a role model or even a little bit of a scare factor for some Republicans in other states where you've got governors who are pushing school choice, but members of a Republican House or Senate uh, at the state level that are pushing back. Thank you, Kim and Bill. Thank you all for listening. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button. And we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Potomac Watch.